So I'm going to be talking today about how to tune your contrachander bagpipe. Uh, contrachander bagpipes are from Hungary, Croatia, Slovakia, Serbia, um, and in that general region. And they're characterized by having um, two reeds. Now, for those of you who play Western bagpipes, those look a lot like drone reeds, uh, but they're single tongue reeds. And I'm going to talk about how to tune them because you're actually tuning two chanters to play in unison. Now I'm going to start out by letting you hear what a badly out of tune chanter sounds like. I'm going to be mouth blowing it, uh, but playing it in the bag would get the same result. So you can hear it's very unpleasant. So how do you tune the chanters? Um, if you're used to tuning other kinds of bagpipes, you might think, well, you adjust the reeds and you get the tonic into tune, but that's not the case with a contra chanter bagpipe. So with these, um, right now you can see these are very uneven. The first thing you're gonna do, uh, assuming that you're just turning the bagpipe to play by itself, is you push both of the reeds all the way in, uh, like this. And then you're gonna mouth blow them. And chances are you're gonna hear something like this. When you play the fifth on the melody pipe. So on uh, Hungarian bagpipe, that's uncovering um, this finger. Uh, on other kinds of contrachant or bagpipes, it may be another one. But you're gonna, they're not, it's not gonna sound pleasant. And what you're going to do is determine which of the reeds is sharp and which is flat. So in this case, I'm going to shade that open hole with my finger. And if by covering it a little bit, I push it into pitch, um, then I know that the uh, reed, the melody pipe reed is sharp, so I need to pull it out just a little bit, like, like this. And then I'm gonna try it again. And there you can hear that it's sounding in pitch. So now I have the two pipes in pitch. Now on the other hand, if what I do is play Let's see, get this right. If I, sorry, I just need to make an adjustment so you can hear what it sounds like. If covering that hole a little bit makes it sound worse, you know that that pipe is actually sharp. And see there, I uncovered that hole a little bit. And so if that's the case, what I need to do is pull out the, uh, the contra pipe, so something like that. Now ideally if the chanter is well made, this is going to get you in tune once you've got them playing. In tune. And you, you'll get used to hearing it, you make small adjustments. And there it's playing in tune. And in this case, what you see is for, for this one, it's actually with the, the Contra uh, reed pulled out just a tiny bit. Okay, now the next thing you're gonna do is once that's in tune, you may find that if you cover all the holes on the melody pipe, but leave the, the Contra hole open, it's gonna sound terrible. Now, if the chanter is well made, it should always be the case that it may be sounding, well, it could be sounding sharp or flat, but you have the tuning slot on the side. And in this case, I know that it's sounding, the melody pipe is sounding sharp. So what I'm gonna do is apply more wax to the tuning hole, or the tuning slot. And the idea is that I'm gonna lower the pitch of the tonic. Here it's still a little bit out. I'm gonna adjust it. There, it's playing in unison, it sounds good. The Contra is this extension that allows that variable drone on the pipe to sound down um, at the dominant. And if the hole's uncovered, it sounds not very good. Uh, something like this. It's 
you, know, you want it to sound in unison with the dominant. So, so you hear it sounding almost a full step high there. So what I'm going to do is take some tuning wax um, and I'm going to apply it to the hole covering most of it. And let's see how that sounds. It's actually sounding quite sharp today. I'm not sure why. So I'm going to, I keep covering more and more of that hole. And I want it to sound an octave lower than the dominant. Now ideally, when you tune this, you're going to end up covering quite a bit of the hole probably. You'd actually like to tune it just a little bit sharp of what you want. And the reason for this is that then you can tune the contra ever so slightly by moving it in or out like this. And so I've got this tune where it's just pulled out about two millimeters. <laughs> Okay, so now that the, the chanter is playing in tune mouth blown, we're going to put it into the bag. Now, one thing that you may find happens is that playing it in the, in the bag gives you slightly different tuning, and then you have to make some more adjustments, but the process is the same. Now, I'm going to blow this up, and I've got my drone slides basically all the way in, and it's probably going to sound terrible. You can hear it sounds very much out, so that's because the drone's sounding sharp right now. So I'm going to loose, I'm going to let the slides out a bit, the tuning slides, and we'll see where we go. I've let both of them out about, uh, about 10 millimeters or so. <laughs> Hear that sounds a bit better. Okay, now the tonic's in, but you can hear that that contra is actually sounding a bit flat. So that's what I said about it may sound differently when you have it played in the bag. So I'm going to use the pick. I'm going to uncover some more of that, um, that wax, and let's give it a try. Okay, now I've got it pulled out. It's in tune with a reasonable amount out on the slide, and I think it's playing in tune mostly. Let's try it again. Okay. My melody pipe is sounding just a trifle sharp right now. So I'm going to pull, because the contra reed's pulled all the way in, I'm going to pull this out just a smidge. We're just trying to get that, that fifth into tune and sounding good. I'd say that sounds pretty good. Now, because I pulled that out, now the uh, this is the um, tonic is sounding just a little bit flat. So I'm going to open up a bit more of that tuning slide, or sorry, tuning slot there. Just a smidge flat on the tonic. Rest is sounding great, so I'm opening that slot just a little bit more, and let's see how it sounds.
still needs a little bit more wax removed. You can hear it's pretty subtle at this point. So I am just continuing to adjust it. Okay, let's see how that sounds. Actually, sounding pretty well in tune. Um, let's try it again. Okay, now one last word. Um, with a really well-made chanter, most of the notes should play pretty accurately in tune once you've got that taken care of. But occasionally what you'll find, particularly with um, lower quality chanters, is that individual notes will not sound quite right. Um, if they sound sharp, that's good because you can take and apply wax to a finger hole. Uh, some players will take electric tape and cover part of a hole start covering from the top of the hole because what you're trying to do is force the pitch down just a bit. Now if they're sounding flat and it's significantly flat, um, you can try and make up for that by adjusting the reeds but it gets a bit tricky because um, it, it, it's just tough to do that because as you adjust the reeds then everything else is going to move and really the best solution if you have a note that's significantly uh, flat and everything else is in tune and you feel like the chanter sounding good is you're going to take a file and actually open up the top of the hole a bit to try and raise that pitch. Now hopefully you never have to do that. Um, hopefully you're only dealing with making them flatter because that's the situation you want to be in with tuning wax. Um, but that's how you tune your uh, Contra chanter uh, bagpipe. Thanks. Uh...